The 2022 Discovery Awards finalists for Professional of Distinction. Sponsored by Stuart McKelvey. I have always been interested in the skeleton and the incredible diversity of the skeleton across animals. I have a very diverse team and what we do is we study the underlying developmental mechanisms, um, particularly the gene expression pathways that underlie the development of the skeleton. And we do this by looking at embryos of different animals and looking at the genes that are responsible for bone and cartilage development. That provides us a lot of insight in how the skeleton of humans even form, because a lot of human disorders recapitulate the developmental pathways that we see during embryonic development. And so if we understand and really get a good deep understanding of what happens in the embryo, it will help us understand the disorders and diseases that humans face relating to their skeleton. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, which means I specialize in bone and joint issues that children have. I specialize in what's called early onset scoliosis. It's children who are diagnosed in the early years of life. If you don't do anything to treat scoliosis, that side to side curve of the spine can start to impact the lungs and, and the heart. We had noticed that there was a gap in the literature and that the method of measuring spine growth in one plane or one direction didn't account for the three-dimensional curves of the spine. So our group of research engineers at IWK developed a type of growth measurement called three-dimensional true spine length and it's being used uh, around the world. A coastal geomorphologist is someone who studies the interaction of the coastal zone and the forces of water, waves, uh, and all of the dynamics and how the shoreline itself actually moves over time. And specifically, I look at how can we better make coastal communities more resilient to climate change. And what we're trying to do is implement nature-based solutions to allow our coastal communities to respond to the severities of coastal flooding and erosion. Many people may not know how much really important work is happening within the province. In the last 17 years, we have restored 400 hectares of tidal wetlands within the province of Nova Scotia. What gives me joy is the fact that my research is applied, it's direct, it's making a difference with both coastal communities and also eco coastal ecosystems.